Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today I'm going to do a video about a cassette that a lot of you have asked me to do a video on. Why? Because it seems I have a reputation for deflowering expensive cassettes and you want me to do it again. Well, I've already done the MAR, I've done the MAXG, so let's have another look at another cassette that is in the top echelons, you know, along with the likes of the Metal Vertex and the Denon MGX. I'm talking about the Sony Metal Master. Now, if you don't know what this cassette's all about, let me explain to you. It's, it's pretty obvious as soon as you see it. It's a white cassette and there's not many white cassettes that aren't like cheap pre-recorded ones or 70s type zeros. There's not many great white cassettes. I mean, there was the TDK Optimum, that was pretty cool, and there was the odd TDK AR limited edition, but not many white recordable cassettes. And that's not really the secret sauce in this one. If you look at it very close there, you can see it says Ceramic Composite. Ceramic Composite Half and Guide. So this cassette is a heavy cassette because the entire shell is made out of ceramic. Now this is the 1988 European version and they also made a version of it in 1990 and this is the 1990 version where it says ceramic composite even clearer and I've been told that I don't show the backs of the packs enough so there we go. Let's have a look at the back of the pack and see what it says. So, the ultimate tape from Sony, ceramic composite shell and tape guide for minimal modulation noise. I mean, they were using ceramic composite tape guides in the UX Pro at this time as well, but um, it's all about modulation noise. Why would you use a ceramic shell? Let's just see what it says on the back of this one, just for completeness. Yep. Ceramic composite shell, guide block, double coated extra alloy particles, new high polymer binder system and a special dispersion control process. I don't know what the last three means, but there we are. They, the facts sort of speak for themselves. It's all about shell modulation and shell noise. You see, you've got to think inside the shells, you've got the hubs that are spinning round and they can wobble and they can make noise and they make the tape wobble and if the tape starts to wobble you know about the azimuth where the tape has to pass over the head perfectly and if it goes up and down a bit it can lose the azimuth and it also helps with wow and flutter because if you've got a heavier shell as the capstans are pulling the tape it pulls it smoother because the tape isn't moving as the tape's hubs are going round so it does make a lot of sense that a heavier shell will have some benefits. How much benefits? Mm, well, these are commonly regarded as some of the best cassettes ever made. Um, but as with all the expensive cassettes, which have a little bit of something different about them, you know, MERs, MEXGs with their shells and the metal alloy and the Denon MGX with the ceramic shell, etc., its price, these were always expensive. Even when you know, cassettes were sort of dying. You never saw these being given away. I mean, I had a boss, a great guy. I'd like to meet up with him again. If, you, if you're if watching this Tony P, yeah, ping me a line. I'd love to meet up and have a beer. But he, back in them days, he had a, a, a Lotus Esprit and he was very proud of that car. And um, he used to swear by these. He used to buy these. These were the only blanks he bought because even back in the late 80s, early 90s. I remember these being about £20 for one. Nowadays, they haven't gone up in price quite as much like, say, MARs have, or MAXGs. Um, you know, these, these I sell these for around £60, um, depending on which version. But I know what you came here for. You came here to see me tear the wrapper off one. And you're not going to see it. You know why? Because I've just tore the wrapper off one, and while I was doing the first take, the doorbell rang. So, sorry and all that, but here we have my freshly unwrapped Metal Master. So, let's have a closer look at it. So, 
So we have a fairly normal J card. I mean, you know, it's very nice. Nice silver and gold printing. It's very nice. Uh, nothing extra special. The, the case itself is just a regular Sony case. Now, caution. Let's have a read. This cassette has been designed with ceramic composite material in order to provide the best possible sound quality. The nature of this material requires a following special care. Do not drop, bang or cause impact to the cassette shell. That's pretty obvious for basically anything you don't want to break. It's delicate, handle with care. It's designed for high-end stereo use. It's not recommended for car use due to its heavier than average weight which may cause problems with some car stereo ejection systems. The plug at the side of the cassette tape is to prevent erasure by mistake. Remove the plug and reinsert it in reverse to protect tape contents. So, basically, yeah. It's ceramic, which is, you know, tile material. And that sort of begs the question, I know it's a bit different to have a cassette made out of ceramic material, but, you know, the, the TDK MAR stuff and all that was a an alloy frame, you know, alloy metal. This is ceramic. This is the stuff they make tiles from. Tiles aren't exactly expensive, you know. They're not exactly costing a fortune to make tiles. I mean, yes, I, I appreciate this is harder to make than injection moulding plastic, but... Is it that much more? But, nah, it is really nice. It's it's a very nice cassette to feel. You can see we've got the ceramic guide blocks here, but like I say, we've had them in UX Pros, and uh, you can see them down in the bottom. So here's the other thing about it is, obviously, you don't get stickers with this. Index lettering. You get a set of these. Now, do you remember these when you were young? You used to, you got to press down on them, get a pen on the top and then scribble over them and it will actually um, just leave the lettering directly on the shell itself. So you scribble on them and that's how you letter it. I mean, you wouldn't want to put a Kajigugu album on this because I don't think there's enough uh, O's, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's different. Um, I mean, it's like the Metal Vertex. The Metal Vertex actually had gold leaf versions of these that you can scrub on top. But yeah, I mean, that's what you got for your money. You got a very heavy cassette with the stencil labels, a little caution leaflet, and a pretty regular case. So yeah, that's the, the Metal Master. Now, there was another version, the Super Metal Master. Now, at the time these were in Sony's range, these were the top of the range in 88 and 90. These, the Metal Master disappeared for the 92 range, at least in Europe, and it was replaced by the Signature Metal Master. And the, the difference really was, uh, the Signature Metal Master came in a metal, sorry, Signature, I call it that because there's a Signature on the front, but it's a Super Metal Master. That came in a, in a little metal tin. Now, as regards to the tape being different, and anything else about the cassette being different, from what I've read, um, the only main differences are that perhaps this has a slightly different guide and some of the internals are slightly different. You know, maybe they're updating them after seeing how these fared. The tape, pretty much the same. Some people are saying it's, it's a different tape, a, a more coated one. I don't know because I've got to be honest, I've not used a super metal master and the price you go for i've no real interest in finding out because again it's these are a collector's tape in real world terms in a good deck this doesn't sound really any better than any decent metal you know i put this in the dragon biased it up recorded on it if i did the same with just a lowly tdk maa i you know listen and can i really tell a difference no, not really, but um, it's still a lovely thing to have. Um, it really is a top-end cassette. Oh, I didn't point out, yeah, the, the right erase tabs at the top. This is like with the MAR uh, and the MHG, where you can actually pull them out, if you will, yeah? Like that, and then put them in that way, I think. Is it that way? Ah! Oh. Bear with me a second, it's a bit fiddly. It's very fiddly. It's not like the MERs. The MERs are nice and easy, but anyhow, you can take them out 
and if you want to record on it again you can just pop them back in but to be honest I like the way the uh, the TD case tapes do it better than this because this uh, that just that's just fiddly and flimsy but yeah so that's the Sony Metal Master very expensive could be argued that it's Sony's greatest tape uh, I don't think it is personally uh, I'd go with the 1986 UX Pro, but that's because I, I like Type 2s more than Type 4s on the whole. But um, enough of me talking about it. Let me put some music on this and play it on one of my pretty decks so we can look at it spinning around and enjoy how good this tape can sound. <laughs> So I'm going to use my little Dual 814 again for this. I mean, there's not a lot of point in an open world deck with a cassette like this though, really, because you can't really see anything. In the quest for stability and weight, you know, the, the big window's gone. You know, it's not like the MAR and MAXG where you can see it in all its glory. This one, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit like the Metal Vertex. You can't really see anything there, apart from the hubs going around. But never mind, we're here to listen to the sound. So uh, let's just fire this up, put it in. Now this song, because I get a lot of people asking what the songs are even though I do say, this song is a song that I did with a singer a few years ago who then disappeared off the face of the earth. So as such, uh, I'm, I morally can't release this song because she co-wrote it with me and it wouldn't be right to release it without her. However, I did put a lot of work into this song so I should be able to do something with it. So I'm going to use it as my demo song today. This song is called Lost Astronaut Falling. And this is the only place you're ever going to hear it. Unless, uh, Gwen, you actually stumble across this. And if you do, Gwen, get in contact with me. Because I've been trying to get in contact with you. Because we've got some songs we need to release and work on still. Anyway, here we go. Enjoy the Sony Metal Master. <laughs> 